The way we started the semester was solving triangles, and that was a pretty easy skill, but we only dealt with right triangles. And the whole gig in chapter eight is that we want to solve triangles that are not right triangles. And triangles that are not right triangles are called oblique. And so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the different types of oblique triangles. One of the things that we learned with right triangles was that we needed three pieces of information in order to find the other three pieces. And the same is true with oblique triangles. We need three pieces of information. <coughs> and we classify oblique triangles based on the information that we're given. So if we take a look at this chart here, we have all these classifications on the left. This one is angle, angle, side, AAS, because we have two angles and then a side. And that's different than angle, side, angle. Even though we have two angles and a side, this side is in between the two angles that are given. So it's ASA instead of AAS. <coughs> side, side, angle, same idea. We have two sides, and we have an angle that's not in between the two sides. And then SAS, the angle and two sides, but the angles in between the two sides. Easy enough? And then the last one is SSS. So the last one is side, side, side. We know all three sides. We know no angles. Is it clear why we can't have an angle, angle, angle? Why couldn't we have an angle, angle, angle? Yeah, because we couldn't, that, that could be scaled to any number of triangles. We wouldn't have a unique triangle if we had just the three angles. All right, so we're going to le learn two laws, the law of sines and the law of cosines. And the law of sines will be a, a theorem that we're going to use to solve these ones right here. And then the two that you can't use the law of sines for are these two. And we're going to learn a second law in 8.2 called the law of cosines. And the law of cosines will be used for those two cases. The law of cosines is a lot like the Pythagorean theorem, as we will see. Law of cosines, let's investigate it. Did I just say law of cosines, let's investigate it? Law of sines, let's investigate it. Law of sines, that's what we're doing first. And law of sines is a really nice theorem. It's uh, set up as ratios between angles and sides. And as long as you're consistent, you can write the law of sines either with the angles on top or the angles on the bottom. Doesn't matter. Both are the same. And we just set up these proportions based on the information that we have. And so the idea is that you have three pieces of information. So let's say maybe we have information about A and B. So perhaps we know these three pieces of information. And if we know those three pieces of information, then we can solve for A. All right, so we set up a proportion or a ratio based on the three pieces of information we have in hopes of finding a fourth piece of information. And usually what we would do, what I would do, is put whatever we're trying to find in the top left. So if I'm trying to find an angle, I'm going to put that in the top left. If I was trying to find a side, I would put that in the top left and use this form, just so that it reduces some of the uh, multiplication and division that you have to do later. So one of the things to observe about the law of sines is that you must know an opposite angle side pair for this formula to work. So when we're looking at our triangle, let's go back to this categorization here for a minute. When we look at this first triangle, the AAS, we have this opposite pair there. And that's what we need for law of sines to work. You need to have one opposite pair so that you can set up that proportion between the angles and the sides. So if you look at this one down here, the side angle side, this doesn't work for law of sines because we don't have the side opposite that angle, we don't have the angle opposite that side, we don't have the angle opposite uh, this side. So that means we would have two unknowns if we were trying to set up that, that sine law of sines proportion. 
So we're not going to be able to use log sines for that particular case or the side, side, side. Okay, so we have to have this opposite pair. Again, two cases that law of signs won't work for, SSS and SAS. So let's take a look at a case where we can use it. And first, let's classify this. We have two angles on a side. How would we classify this one? Two angles on a side. Angle, angle, side. So angle, angle, side. And if we want to use law of sines, we can, because we have an opposite pair here. The opposite pair that we have is the 24 and the 38 degrees. So that's an opposite pair. We have side B and angle B. So that's kind of our anchor. Let's go ahead and set up our proportion. And what should we be solving for first? See if we're going to use law of sines. And the most natural thing probably to solve for is angle A, but you don't need law of sines for that, obviously, because we're just going to subtract from 180. So let, let's solve for that quickly, because that's if, when you have two angles, it's usually most folks' inclination to figure out what that third angle is right away. So when we subtract there, we have 59. So that's going to be one. Uh, what's that? 121. I subtracted right. Okay. All right, so let's solve for C now. So the natural place to start with law of sines is to solve for C. So I'm going to put C in the top left. I'm going to put sides on top, angles on bottom. And we just have to be consistent. If we're consistent all the way through, it's not a problem. So we're going to do C over the sine of the angle opposite C, so sine of 21. And then we have the known pair, our opposite pair right here, side on top, angle down below. And so that's the proportion that we'll set up. And then we just solve that for C. And all we have to do is multiply both sides by sine of 21 degrees. And then type it into our calculator. I think I forgot my calculator. Oh, it's a good thing you guys are here with calculators. So somebody is going to be typing that in and approximating that. What do you think we should approximate that to? What's that? 14? So the nearest unit with these triangles, just like with the right triangles, we just do it consistently. If the other side that's given is rounded to the nearest unit, then we should round these two sides to the nearest unit. Right. We'll just be consistent with what they give us. <clears throat> the angle in this problem is rounded to the nearest degree, so we would round the other angles to the nearest degree. So just be consistent. All right, now we're good. We've got only one side left, side A. We'll use law of, uh, law of signs again. We'll put A on top. And then we have to use angle A in the denominator, which is 121, so that's sine of 121. And now here we have a choice. We have to set up a fraction here, to a side and an angle that we know. We could use the same one, and that's my recommendation, is that we use that one right there. You might say that, well, we found side C, so we know C and angle C right there. We could use that, but the only issue is that we rounded to get the 14. So let's go ahead and use the information that's given in the triangle that we can assume that that's not rounded or, or maybe it is rounded and we just don't know, but whatever. We know, we know for sure that this is more accurate than that. So let's go ahead and use this same opposite pair. And then we're going to solve that for A. So A will be 24 sine of 121 degrees divided by sine of 38 degrees. And what do you get when you plug that into the nearest unit? 33. Thank you. So that will be our last piece. Ah. 
That's not bad. <laughs> you don't have to think about ranges of inverse trig functions. Just set up a nice little ratio. And solve. Why don't you guys work on number two? It's the same setup. It's an angle side angle. So you guys work on that and see if it just unfolds nicely for you. Hopefully it will. If not, raise your hand and someone will come help you. Me or her. That one. So quiet today. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. It's always helpful to have a calculator. All right, let's go ahead and find A first, angle A, or angle B first. Let's find the angle that's unknown with the two angles that we're given. So that's simple enough. That's just a subtraction problem. And what do we get for that? That's 154, so 26 degrees. <clears throat> All right, and let's identify the opposite pair that we're going to use in this problem. So the 23, oh, don't have that side. The, where's our opposite pair? Oh, there's not an opposite pair right off the bat, is there? So we're generating our opposite pair, so we're going to have to use angle B, right? And that's fine. We didn't do any rounding, so that's fine. So we have angle B and side B. That's going to be our opposite pair that we'll use as our anchor. Bless you. All right, which uh, side do you want to solve for first? Doesn't matter. C. C. So we'll do C over the sine of the angle opposite side C. And the angle opposite side C is angle C, which is 23 degrees. <coughs> and then our pair that we're going to use, we have to put side on top. And then angle down below. So we get that. Just remember, if you do a side on top, you have to, on the left, you have to do a side on top on the right. Just have to be consistent. And then we multiply both sides by sine of 23 degrees. We type that into our calculator, and we're going to round to the nearest unit. And what do we get? Say again? Nine. OK, thank you. All right, side C. And then uh, we'll go for side A. So side A divided by the sine of the angle A, which is 131. We use the same ratio that we used above.
multiply both sides by the denominator from the left. So we end up with 10 sine of 131 divided by sine of 26. And what do we get when we type that in? 17? So that is it. Not too bad. <clears throat> space for the next one. All right. Let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> so here, this is more common. We're, we're not given a picture, but we should be able to generate the picture pretty easily. And what we have is one obtuse angle. So that's definitely going to be down here. We have 126.5 degrees, and that's angle A. So side A will be opposite it, 17.2. And then C is 13.5. It doesn't matter where we draw it. We can draw it in either one. I'll just draw it there. So if that's side C, then this is angle C up there. Let's use a different color for the unknowns. So this is angle C up there. <clears throat> and that was given to be angle A, so this must be angle B. And this must be side B. Okay, so this one, how would they classify this one? Angle side side. We have two side. We have two sides and an angle. They would classify it as side side angle. If you want to classify it as angle side side, it's up to you. Either way, the book aims not to offend anyone. All right, so that's the situation. And we are going to solve for, let's see, what do we have to solve for first here? We don't have a lot of choice with this one. Yeah, angle C is the only thing we can solve for first. Right, we're only given one angle, so we can't solve for another angle using the subtraction method. The only thing we can do is use law of sines to solve for that angle up there. We've got our, our opposite pair here, and then that's the only other piece of information we know, and the unknown across from it's angle C. So we have to solve for angle C first here. No other choice. So we're solving for angle C, so I'm going to put that in the numerator. Sine C. I'll put the opposite side below, 13.5. <coughs> And then we're going to go to the, the opposite pair that we know. And different than over here, we're putting the angle up top. So we're going to put sine of 126.5 in the numerator. And then the 17.2, the opposite side down below. That proportion. And. It's still fairly straightforward. We have two steps, though. We multiply both sides by 13.5. And then we have to take the inverse sine of both sides. So we're multiplying by 13.5 first. And after we've multiplied by 13.5, we have to unravel and get down into angle C. So we do the inverse sine of both sides. And that's fine. We can do that here. We, we learned that inverse sine is a function. And the values of inverse sine are on the right side of the unit circle. And if we take the inverse sine of a positive number, we would be in quadrant 1. And that angle is definitely in quadrant 1. right? That's an acute angle. Angle C is an acute angle, so if we put it in standard position in quadrant one, it would, it would work. You know, it's somewhere in quadrant one. So inverse sine works here. Now, just for the sake of argument, if the obtuse angle was unknown, would inverse sine be able to find an obtuse angle? No. Because inverse sine 
only can give an angle between minus 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So if we're dealing with a triangle, inverse sine is giving us an angle between 0 and 90. So inverse sine can't find an obtuse angle. Could inverse cosine do it? Inverse cosine can do it. And so with law of cosines, what we will see is that if there is an unknown obtuse angle, we're going to target that one. So if you're using law of sines and there's an obtuse angle, find the other angle if you can. And then you can use the subtraction property to get to the obtuse angle. All right, so take that into your calculator. And what do you get for angle C? So this angle that was given was rounded to the nearest tenth. So let's do that for angle C. So what do we get if we round to the nearest tenth? 39.1 degrees. So we just want to be consistent with what they started. All right, angle C. Done. Now we have two known angles, so let's go ahead and find angle B. Since we have two angles, we can find the third. So angle B will be 180 degrees minus 39.1 degrees minus 126.5 degrees. So angle B is, what do we get with that? 14.4, thanks. 14.4 degrees. And then our last piece, we have one piece to go. <coughs> and what is that? Side B. All right. So we definitely have to use angle B. So if you have to use a rounded angle, you have to use a rounded angle. You could go back and try to run this out further, but just keep it simple. We, you, we rounded C to the nearest tenth, so then we rounded B to the nearest tenth. To carry this C out a couple more decimal places to make that a little bit more accurate, with these triangles, it's usually not necessary. Most of the time, it's not necessary. All right, so we're trying to find side B, so we're going to put side B in top, and we're going to put sine of angle B down below. And then we're going to go back up and grab our known pair. And our known pair is right there. The thing we have to be wary of is that we have to flip it, because we want side on top, angle on bottom. So we just have to match. So we're going to put a 172, or excuse me, a 17.2 divided by sine of 126.5. So we get that. That will be our proportion. And then here we just have to multiply by that denominator, and that will give us side B. So 17.2 sine of 14.4 in the numerator, and then in the denominator we'll have sine of 126.5. And what do we get when we type that in? 5.3. Does that look good to everybody? So did we round consistently? There we go. So sides, if we look at our sides, they're all rounded to the nearest tenth. So we round that to the nearest tenth also. Law of sines? Ooh, before we get to that. So any questions on law of sines so far? Is it, it feels curiously easy, right, so far? That can't last. <laughs> it's got to get harder. So all right, here, let's make it harder. All right, so there is a case for the law of sines that is referred to as the ambiguous case. And it is the case, the SSA case, if they haven't drawn a picture, there are multiple options. And what we are going to do is this. First off, they call it SSA, but in practice when you're drawing this ambiguous case, it's best to draw it as ASS. And 
if you do it the same way every time, you'll get to the point where you can figure out whether there is one solution or no solutions or two solutions. So let's try to understand this. So down below, they're drawing the base of the triangle, and that's unknown. We do not know that side. So that is unknown, and that's definitely what I recommend with the ASS case. Draw your unknown side, and then put in your known angle, your known side, and your known side. And then you have to analyze whether you'll have one triangle, two triangles, or no triangles. And so when you look at this case here, you, you, it's kind of obvious that there's no triangle here because in order for there to be a triangle, that side B has to be able to reach the base. So if side B is too short, you're not going to have any triangles. So side B has to be long enough to reach the base, which means it has to be at least equal to this height. And you can calculate that height pretty easily because that, if you drop that vertical, if you drop that height of the triangle right there, that forms a right triangle. So you can always calculate the height of that green triangle and then compare this second side with it to see if you have zero, one, or two triangles. So in this middle case here, if that side B happens to be exactly equal to this height, I'll call it H, then you're going to have one triangle and that triangle is going to be a right triangle. And then here's the, the trickiest case. If you find your height and side B is bigger than the height, then you know you have at least one triangle because it reaches the base. But if it's also less than side C, you have two choices. If it's also less than side C, you could swing that side underneath, forming that obtuse triangle that we see there. So forming this obtuse triangle. Or you could swing it out that way, forming this large triangle, this outer triangle. Usually I'll refer to the red one as the outer triangle and the blue one as the inner triangle. The inner triangle will always have an obtuse angle. The outer triangle could have an obtuse angle, and if it did, it would be up here. If it swung out farther, you could have an obtuse angle up top. So do you see the, how you have the two possible triangles there? So if that second side is longer than the H and shorter than your first side, then you can have two choices, an outside triangle or an inside triangle. OK, now if the that second side is greater than or equal to the first side, then you just have one triangle. So if that second side is equal to or greater than that first side, the only choice is you can't tuck it underneath because it's equal to or greater than. It has to swing out to the right, and you'll have one triangle in that case if it's greater than or equal to the first side. Okay, so a little summary here. If the first, if the angle that you know is obtuse, then you'll never have the two triangle case. If that first angle is obtuse, you can't have the two triangle case. If that first angle is obtuse, you can't swing a side underneath to get two triangles. So. That's actually a, a simpler situation if the angle that you're given is obtuse. And that's the case that we just did over here. Right? Here we were given an angle side side situation, and that angle that we were given was obtuse. So that, that's actually the simplest case for angle side side. So if that angle is obtuse, then we just, all we need is that B is longer than C to form a triangle. As long as B is longer than C, then we'll make a triangle. So we'll have no solution if B is equal to or less than C. No solution. And if B is greater than C, then yeah, we'll have one solution, one triangle. All right. So that's.
that is the complicated angle side side case. So let's try a few. So again, I think it's easiest to draw your triangle with the unknown side as the base. And we move from the left side around angle side side clockwise from uh, the lower left. So moving clockwise. So here's our information that's given. So we have to draw a picture. We draw our unknown base. They tell us that ang the, the angle that we know is 40 degrees, so we're going to put that right there. And then we have two sides. We have the side that's opposite B, that's got to be over here, and we have the side that's not opposite B, which we'll put right there. Okay, so that's the, that's what it looks like. We have to decide. All right, is that 14 long enough to reach the base? Well, let's calculate the height of this triangle. And the height of this triangle we can calculate using right triangle trig. The height of that is, is h, which is the, the opposite side to that, to that angle, 40 degrees. So we calculate the height. Sine of 40 will be h over the hypotenuse. And we calculate down until we get h is 10.3. So that second side is greater than 10.3. So we know we have at least one triangle. Then we have to compare it to the first side. Oh, it's less than the first side. So that means that second side could be tucked underneath to form an inner triangle, or it can swing outside to form an outer triangle. So we have two possibilities. <clears throat> Any questions on how we conclude that there's two triangles there? Everybody see those? inequalities that you're comparing. So to have at least one triangle, this second side has to be greater than h. To have two triangles, it also has to simultaneously be less than the first side. So it can swing under or swing out. Two possibilities. All right, so let's solve them. Um, the, I think I have enough space there. Let's do it here. OK. So the strategy to solve this, the easiest way is to go with the outer triangle first. And the reason is that the inner triangle has this obtuse angle. And law of sines can't find an obtuse angle. So let's go with the outer triangle. With the outer triangle, that angle there is unknown, and we can find that easily with law of sines. So we're going to do the outer triangle first. So let's label it. So we have, it looks sort of like this. We don't have to be super precise. We know that that's 16. We know that that's 40. And we know that that's 14. And then our unknowns, let's see, what was that was labeled as A. So this is angle A, that's unknown. And I think it was a B that we were given to start. So if that's angle B, then this is angle C, and this is side C. So those are the three that we don't know. All right. And angle A, that's where we have to start. There's no other choice. We only have one angle, so we can't do a subtraction rule to get another angle. The only choice is to go for angle A. And that's why we want to choose the outer triangle, because angle A here is obtuse. Right? That angle A is obtuse. The law of science can't find that. We'd have to find a reference angle and then do some subtraction. A little bit harder. Well, let's, go the let's go the path of least resistance. Outer triangle. All right. So angle A, let's put it in the numerator since we're trying to find it on the left. So sine of A over 16 will equal what's the ratio on the right? Sine of 40 over 14. Exactly what everybody was thinking. All right, and then we have to solve that for A. So first we multiply by 16, and then we have to take the inverse sine. So it will be the inverse sine of 
16 multiplied by sine of 40. That, of course, you could reduce, but since you're typing it into your calculator anyway, it doesn't really matter. So you're going to type that into your calculator. And we're going to round that to the nearest unit because that's what the other angle is rounded to. And so what do we get when we type that in? 35? 45. 45 degrees, what? <laughs> so you concede? We'll concede to 47? Type it in again, Kelly, just to see. We've got to know for sure. All right, but we have 247, so I'm going to go with 47. Now we have two angles here. So we can go for the third angle, angle C. Let's do that. So angle C will be 180 minus 47 minus 40. So we're subtracting off 87. So what's that going to put us just into the 90s? So 93? Yeah. All right. And then our last is to solve for side C. So side C, let's put that in the numerator. Side C over sine of angle C. And then our pair is right there, the 40 degrees and the 14. Just make sure that we're consistent. If we put side on top on the left, we have to put side on top on the right. So it's 14 over sine 40. And multiply both sides by sine of 93 degrees. And what do we get when we type all that in? 14 sine 93 divided by sine 40. 22 degrees? I mean, 22 units of length, whatever. They didn't give us any units, so it's just 22. Somebody else confirm? We, got a, we have at least two. All right. So there we have our three unknown pieces. Good. So that's the outer triangle. That's the easier one. Now we go for the inner triangle. inner triangle, draw that picture, get a sense of what that one looks like, and we have the same known values, 16, 14, and 40, and then our unknowns are still, if you want to call these something different, you can, I'll, you, I'll put a little asterisk on them just to indicate that they're different than the other ones. And the easiest thing to solve for is this A star here. And let's take a look at this original picture up here with the two triangles at once. So we, we're going to call that angle there A. And we're going to call this angle over here the obtuse one A star. <clears throat> All right, so let's go through this carefully. Do you see that this triangle right here with the 214, oh, I guess we did have units, feet. We do have units. Let's put those units on here, 22 feet. So do you see that we have an isosceles triangle here? An isosceles has two sides that are the same. That means that that angle right there and this angle are the same. You have an isosceles triangle, those two base angles have to be equal. And what does that tell us about angle A star? So if that is angle A, and then this has to also be angle A. So what's the relationship between A star and A? Supplementary, supplementary right? Yeah, they're supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So that's how we can find A star. We just have to do a subtraction. So we can go right to the computation. A star is 100. 80 degrees minus angle A, which we found to be 47. So that's going to be 133 degrees. So that's, that's going to be the technique. Find the outer triangle, and then to find the, the inner obtuse angle, subtract it from 180, whatever the outer acute angle is. All right, now we can so solve for C star. 
So angle C star will be 180 minus 133 minus 40, which is 7 degrees. And then the last thing to solve for is little c star, the side c star. Side over angle, so that's going to be c star over sine of 7 degrees. <coughs> that's going to be 14 over sine 40. And this ratio that we set it equal to will always be the same as that ratio there is always going to be the same as this one. Those will always match. And then what do we get for C star? How many feet? So we 14 times sine of 7 degrees divided by sine of 40 degrees. How many feet say you? Three feet only? Three feet. Going once, going twice. Let's put our units there. Three feet. <clears throat> All right, so that's the hardest case. The law of signs used with two triangles at once. Let's do another one. Sure we have that down. So here is another one. And I've drawn the picture for you. You guys go ahead and do this one. And um, we'll assume that it's obvious that there's two triangles because I calculated the height for you. That's 14.1. And that side over here, side B, is longer than 14.1 and it's less than 21. So there's two triangles there. So you guys go ahead and figure out the, the uh, unknowns for those two triangles.
So it looked like everybody was starting out right. We have to solve for the angle A in the outer triangle. So we're going to say that that's sine of A over 21 equals sine of 42 over 16. And then we have to isolate the variable term sine of A. So we multiply both sides by 21. <clears throat> and then to solve for A here, we'll move the function sine to the other side by using its inverse. We'll get that. And we type all that in, and what do we get for A? 61 degrees. Sounds good. 61 degrees. All right. Then the next step, we now know two angles in this triangle. So we can solve for angle C with the subtraction method. So angle C will be 180 minus 61 minus 42. And that gives us 77. Last step is to solve for little c, the base of this triangle. So little c divided by sine of big C. And then we go back up. And our pair that we know is the 16 and the sine of 42, but we have to flip it so that 16 is on top. The sine of 42 is in the denominator. And then we solve for C by multiplying both sides by sine 77. Beautiful. Beautiful. And what do we get for little c? 23 feet. Confirmed. 23 feet. Great. And uh, this one actually had feet there, and I didn't put it on that triangle, but we'll put it there for sure. All right, any questions on any of those steps to solve that outer triangle? <coughs> All right, so then let's jump to the inner triangle. And when we jump to the inner triangle, we're going to solve for A star first. And again, the key is to look up here, and let's manipulate this a little bit. We're going to have that or that. So the 16 is going to be there or there. And this angle here is what we're calling a, uh, that one we're calling A. That has to be the same as this one, which has to be supplementary to what we're calling A star over there. So 180 degrees minus angle A from the outer triangle. And we found angle A to be 61. <clears throat> so we get that. So that is <clears throat> our angle A star. So the second triangle is you know, it's pretty fast if you've got this all, if you've got the process down because you find that angle so quickly. Now we can find angle C, angle C star, I should say. So that's going to be 180 degrees minus 119. And what was the other angle up there? 42, minus 42. And so what does that all give us? 19? 19. And now we'll go for side C star. So little c star divided by sine of 19. And that ratio is always going to match right over here where we saw for little c. That ratio there is going to match when we come over to this side. So 
of C star will be 16 multiplied by sine of 19 degrees divided by sine of 42 degrees and that all gives us how many degrees? Uh, not degrees. It gives us units of length, or feet in this case. And do we say eight? Eight. Eight feet. There we go. <coughs> Feel okay? All right, well, let's go ahead and take a break. Take ten, and then we'll get to law of cosines. So any questions with the law of sines in the two cases? Any last minute questions on that? But as you practice it, for the most part, if you give yourself enough time to practice it, you'll get it. It's just you need to give yourself enough time to practice it. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at this one. So this is an angle side side, ASS. Angle side side, <coughs> and again, I always will draw them the same. Put the unknown base, draw your angle, and then you can imagine that second side, whether it's long enough to reach the base or not. And now this is one of those cases where we don't have to calculate H because that second side is longer than the first side. If that second side is longer than the first side, there's none of this swinging underneath business because it will hit this side and you can't form a triangle. So that side is going to just come down and form a one big triangle. Because right? that side is longer than the first side. So we don't have to find H in this case. And we will have one triangle. And we don't need H. Everybody see that? Don't need H. Because <clears throat> that second side is longer than the first side. All right. One triangle only to solve for. Let's label the unknown pieces. This was called side B. So that's, or excuse me, that's called angle, angle B. So that's side B. This is side A. So this is angle A which makes that angle C, which makes this side C down here. And again, we're using units of feet. All right, <clears throat> so we have to go for side A first, or <laughs> angle A first, <laughs> bless you. So sine of angle A divided by 21. We'll set that equal to our opposite pair, which is the B and the B. So that's sine 50 over 28. <coughs> so that tells us that we have sine of A equal 21 sine 50 over 28. And that tells us that angle A is the inverse sine of all of that mess. And what do we get for angle A rounded to the nearest degree? We type all that in. Thirty-five. That sound good to people. Thirty-five. At least one confirmation, I think I heard. <clears throat> a half-hearted confirmation, yeah. but a confirmation. We'll take it. So A is 35. Now we have two angles, so let's solve for angle C with subtraction. Angle C is a buck 80 minus 35 minus 50. So that's... 85 we're subtracting, so 95 left. There's that side, or that angle. <laughs> that is an angle, not a side. <clears throat> now that we found angle C, we can find side C. <clears throat> we 
we use the same pair that we used above, but we have to flip it so that it's 28 over sine of 50 degrees. And that tells us that little c is 28 sine 95 divided by sine of 50. So we type that into our calculator. And we get this length, which was in feet. What do we get for that? 36 feet. Awesome. <clears throat> nice. Nice. <clears throat> what side of the unit circle is inverse tangent on? The right side. Does that have anything to do with this? No. Nope. All right. <clears throat> this guy. So again, unknown base, known angle, side A, side B. We definitely have to calculate the height here because the second side is smaller than the first side. And we have an acute angle here. If that angle is given to be obtuse, the only chance of having one triangle is if that second side is longer than the first side. If it's acute, we have to calculate h so we know whether this 12 reaches the base. <coughs> we calculate h here. Whoops. Calculate h there using right triangle trig. Right there. That height is 17.3. So what is our conclusion? Yeah. No triangles here. No triangles. None possible. No triangles. And that's clear to everybody? Right? That 12 can't reach the base unless it's at least the height. It's got to be at least 17.3. And it's not, so we have no triangles. All right, you guys try this one. So that's an angle side side. Angle side side. What an angle side side. Nope, because okay. those are always opposite each other. So yeah, that's right. 
Definitely recommend <clears throat> always putting that unknown base. So that way, if you get in the habit of doing it the same way every time, put your known angle in the bottom left, you'll start to see the patterns really quickly after you do a few hundred examples. Okay, so to calculate the height here, we're going to use sine of the angle 5148. That will be h over the hypotenuse. So the height will be 4.157 multiplied by sine of 51 degrees 48 minutes. And what do you get when you type that in? height? 3.267. 3.267. Thank you. Okay, so then how many triangles do we have? Two. Two. Right. So if the height is 3.267 and this other side, the second side, it's longer than that, and that second side C is shorter than the 4.157. <clears throat> so that tells us that we definitely have two triangles. So then which triangle do we start with, the outer or the inner? Start with the outer. Start with the outer triangle. C's, that was a B, so this is B, this is A, and this is A. <coughs> Alright, so there's our outer triangle. And we always have to go for that lower right angle first. That lower right angle, regardless of how you label things, if you put your unknown base, then that lower right angle is always going to be the first place to solve. So we'll put that in the top left, that's going to be sine of B divided by 4.157. <clears throat> and then our known ratio, our known pair, will be sine 5148 divided by 3.446. So B will be the inverse sine of this fraction. sign of all that. Did anybody get B? 71 degrees 26 minutes 29.76 seconds. 71 degrees 26 minutes. So we'll just go to the nearest minute since that's how they gave the other angle. So we'll just round that. How many seconds did you say? 29.76. 29.76 seconds. So 29.76 seconds. That's Almost, and when it was in degree, did, when it was in a, a fraction of a minute, so we could figure that out. So was it 26.5 minutes, or was it? Tw it's just under that. I. You know what I mean? 
It's like right at that cusp, because 30 seconds would round up to a minute, right? Because it's a little more than half. So is it 26 point, do we figure out? If we just did it, that's the tricky thing. If it's in degrees and minutes and seconds, that seconds, if it's not at least 30, then we would round down. But if it's 30, that's so close to 30, but I think it's just under, so we'll round down to 26. It was 71.4. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so anyway, there's our angle B. I won't give you anything that's quite suspect or close on the edge like that. At <laughs> least not intentionally. All right, so now we can find angle A. Angle A, subtraction property. <clears throat> Look at that. <clears throat> and then when we subtract all that, tell me what you get. <laughs> and then we're going to solve for side A. Somebody type that in. 122, 123. 56 degrees, 46 minutes? Yes, that sounds right. 56, 46. Thank you. is going to drop in right down here. So we'll have 56.46 in here. Yeah, we've learned it's definitely easier to just deal with decimal degrees. side A when we type all that in. Make sure you put your angles in parentheses. Point six six eight. Kelly, confirmation. Cool. All right, great. Thank you, guys. Well done. Oh, that's only half of it. Now let's do the other half. So we did the outer triangle. So now we have to do the inner triangle. The inner triangle. It's usually quicker. The inner triangle is going to look something like that. We'll label all the same stuff. 51 degrees, 48 minutes, 3.446, and 4.157. Unknowns, we'll call it A star, B star, and little a star. And we're going to solve for which one first? Yeah, B star. B star will be 180 minus B, which we found to be 7126. So that's going to be, what's that, 108. Did you say 108.54? So it'll be 34 then, I believe. 34 because that, that'll have to add up to one degree. 
26 minutes and 34 minutes is one degree, so that should be it. And then we can solve for A star by subtracting. Subtraction rule. A star will be 180 minus 108.34 minus 51.48. That, 159, 160 and some change. So what do we get, 19, 1938? 1938. <clears throat> I won't put DMS on the test then, unless it's for an easy one. <coughs> it gets to be a pain with the calculators trying to Keep it all straight. A little bit of extra busy work. <coughs> okay, so let's go for little a star. <coughs> little a star over sine of a star. <coughs> That's going to equal, it's going to be the same ratio as we had over there. 3.446 divided by sine 5148. A star will equal all of this. And what do we get when we type that in? <coughs> and it equal. One point four hundred ninety five one thousandths. <coughs> Looks about right. Seems plausible based on our picture. Should be very short. About half of the other side. Good. All right. Ready for love cosines? Love signs dialed. Let's go for the law of cosines. Oops, jump. Oh, area of a triangle. I forgot about that. <coughs> All right, so when you have an SAS triangle, you, there's actually a formula that allows you to find the area of that triangle pretty easily. And that area is just what you see right up here, half. BC sine A or half AB sine C, the pattern is this. <clears throat> so if you have an SAS, so you know uh, two sides, so let's label this one, let's put this as 2.1, this is 1.5, and this is 75.16 degrees. So there's the triangle we have. <clears throat> that would be side C, opposite angle C. This would be angle A, and that would be angle B. So if you have an SAS setup, <clears throat> you can find the area super easily. Area will be equal to half <clears throat> the product of the adjacent sides multiplied by the sine of the included angle. <clears throat> and we call this the included angle when it's trapped between two sides. So I say that's the inc an included angle. And that's it. That will be the, the area of the triangle. And that's very easy to confirm because what's the area formula that you're used to? Half base height. And we just have been calculating the height of a bunch of triangles. And this is the height right there. 1.5 times sine of 75.16, that is the height. The height of this triangle, <coughs> we can find using right triangle trig. 
right? Because the sine of 75.16, 75.16 degrees, I should say. If we use our right triangle trig, that's h over the hypotenuse, which is 1.5. Multiply both sides by 1.5. So we see that, oh yeah, it is half base height. So you don't have to memorize a new formula. It's more of an observation. If you have to find the area of an oblique triangle, drop that, find the height, do half times base times height. Or if you, you know, happen to remember this formula, that's fine also. But I generally don't recommend remembering a brand new formula if you don't need it. So, <clears throat> but it's a good observation to see that it falls directly from the formula you're used to. So what do we get when we type all that in? meters squared. <clears throat> All right. So areas. Interesting. <clears throat> let's I forgot that that, let's go to law of cosines. We'll do an application like this at the end if we have plenty of time. Let's get to the law of cosines. So there's law of cosines. So looking at that, those formulas, they look super Pythagorean-like. And if you happen to have a right angle, what is the cosine of 90 degrees? Cosine of 90 is 0. So if you have a right triangle, this part will vanish, and you'll have the regular Pythagorean theorem. So a couple of patterns. First, you observe that this part looks exactly Pythagorean, where the thing on the left would be the hypotenuse if it was a right triangle. <coughs> now, the part out to the right, it's always minus 2 times the product of the sides that are on the right. So BC, BC, AC, AC, AB, AB. And it's always cosine of the angle that's opposite whatever the side is on the left. So angle opposite C is C, angle opposite B is B, angle opposite A is A. Right, so those formulas are pretty easy to get down because they have such a clear pattern. So here is one that's worked out. We use this for these two cases, SSS and SAS, where you can't use law of sines. So here is an SAS situation. So we are going to look at the side opposite of angle B. So B squared will equal A squared plus C squared minus 2 times AC cosine B. So this one, I just worked it out for you, just plugged it in. We have two sides plugged in, cosine of that angle, not sine. Remember, it's cosine. And we get to the side B is 25. OK. So now we have two more pieces of information to find. We have to find angle A and angle C. We don't want to use law of cosines again because it's kind of long and unwieldy. Law of sines is pretty simple compared to law of cosines. So once we've used law of cosines once, then we're going to jump back to law of sines. So we use law of cosines to find this angle, or excuse me, to find this side, little b. Now we can use law of, law of sines. Okay? So now we have this opposite pair because we just found side b. So now we have a pair. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's solve for it. Doesn't matter. We have the side opposite A. We have the side opposite C. So it doesn't matter if we go for A or C. Let's go for A. <coughs> we'll put that in the top. And then side A is 12 equals sine of 133. All right. So now we definitely are using a rounded B if we use the 25. So let's go with the unrounded number. These, these angles are rounded to the nearest degree. If we go out to two decimal places in B, that should be plenty. So we can go 24.79. That should work out totally fine. 
<coughs> if you're smart with your calculator, though, all of your calculators have the STO down in the bottom left. And that STO allows you to store numbers into letters on the calculator. So if you want, when you get to this point right here, you can click the STO button and you can choose a letter, depending on the calculator, the letters, you have different choices. Um, but you can store your letter in, into a variable if you want. And that way you can use an unrounded number for future computation if you want. And if you don't want to deal with that, you could just do what I did here. And if you go out to two decimal places beyond what things are rounded to, if you go out to two decimal places beyond, that 99% of the time that will work out fine. All right, so <coughs> angle A is going to be the inverse sine of 12 sine 133 divided by 24.79. And what do you get to the nearest degree when you plug all that in? <coughs> so angle A is? Say again? So 21 rounded? 21 or 20 rounded? 21? We round to the nearest degree. And then we're going to subtract off right down here to get angle C. So we'll have 154, so 26 degrees would be that angle. Okay, so the idea with law of cosines, use it once and then jump back to law of sines. <coughs> Alright, so let's do <coughs> I'll do one SSS and then you guys can do the other one. So these are both SSS. <coughs> I'll work this first one. <coughs> I think it helps to draw a picture just to have a sense of what's going on. And one word of warning is they're gonna try to trick you. They like to try to trick you at times. And there could be SSS when you look at it and you start drawing a triangle, there might be cases where there is no triangle. So who knows what the rule is for three numbers to be a triangle? Does anyone know what the rule is that would force so if you just pick three numbers at random, there has to be, there's a condition that has to be met for those three numbers to actually... Exactly. The sum of any two sides has to be greater than the third. So if you had like one and five and ten, that won't form a triangle. One, five, ten, because one plus five is six, it's not big enough. All right, so they call that the triangle inequality. The sum of any two has to be bigger than the third. If that's true, then it's definitely a triangle. <coughs> so sum of those two is bigger than seven. Sum of those two is bigger than 11. Sum of those two is bigger than five. So this definitely will be a triangle. All right, so I'm just guessing as to what it looks like just for help. So we'll call that <coughs> angle A up there. B, we'll call that 5.4, call this B. Call this 7, call that C. Okay, so <clears throat> now I said use law of cosines once and then go to law of sines. The other thing we talked about earlier is that the law of sines can't find an obtuse angle. So if there is an obtuse angle in this triangle, we want to find it with law of cosines because inverse cosines on the top half of the circle, it can find an obtuse angle. So if there is an obtuse angle, which angle does it have to be? A. a. The biggest <coughs> angles opposite the biggest side. So if there is an obtuse angle, it would be A. So we want to find A with law of cosines just in case. Make sure. So finding A. 
The Pythagorean theorem, part of it will be a squared equals b squared plus c squared. <clears throat> and then we subtract off 2bc, and then it's multiplied by cosine of the angle opposite the side on the left. So let's plug and chug. So we're going to get 11.2 squared is equal to 5.4 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5.4 times 7 times cosine of A. So here we have to be very careful. It's super easy to make a mistake here. <clears throat> We're going to subtract off all these squares. So they're going to be over on the left <coughs> like that. And if you're totally comfortable skipping the step um, that I'm putting up here, that's fine. If you're not comfortable skipping it, put it in. So what some people will do is subtract that stuff over, get a number here, and leave the coefficient of cosine as to whatever it is, 11.2 squared minus 5.4 squared minus 7 squared. So over here we get 47.28. And then over here we get a negative number. So we have 5.4 times 2 times 7, so 75.6. We do that. So then co uh, negative, negative. And then cosine of A will be equal to negative 47.28 divided by 75.6. <coughs> so if you want. You can go straight to this if you're really good with parentheses and things. Because what you would have to do over here is make sure all this is in parentheses, and then you're going to divide by all of this. So if you're good with parens, you can just jump right to that and say cosine is equal to this divided by that. Totally fine. Works out great. As long as you don't mess up your parentheses. So 47.28 divided by 75.6, and we've got a negative in front. And then we have to do inverse cosine of that to get A. So A will equal 120. If we go to the nearest degree, oh, we don't even have anything up there. So let's just go, let's go to the nearest tenth of a degree just to make sure that the rounding pieces. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's what you get for A. So there is an obtuse angle. It's not always obvious by just looking at the side lengths. So you just sort of assume if there is an obtuse angle, it's opposite the longest side. So we go for that angle first. Everybody get that same angle? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, now that we have that angle, it doesn't matter. We can go for B or C. It doesn't matter. So let's go for B. So to solve for angle B, we would do sine of B over the length of B, which is 5.4, equals the sine of A. So here's also a great place to use your store thing in your calculator when you calculated A. Instead of using the rounded A, it's best if you use the unrounded A. So if you can store that in your calculator and then recall it, that's, that's ideal. <coughs> and then the side opposite A is 11.2. So B will be the inverse sine of all of this. Type that in yet? 22.1 if we stick with our convention of going to one decimal place. Thank you. 
And then the last step is just the subtraction property. We've got a angles A and B, so angle C is 180 minus 128.7 minus 22.1. What's that? 29.2. Thank you. 29.2 degrees. All right, that's log. Cosines. So now you guys try it with this other SSS triangle. Try it with that guy right there. Anyone see anything funny with this one? Not a triangle. Exactly. So this is not a triangle. This would be like one of those tests, you know, where the instructions say, read every problem in the test, and the last problem says, you know, all you have to do is write your name on this, and you get a million percent. <clears throat> if you didn't notice that, you would be going all the way down, and then you would get to a place where one of your angles is negative or something funny would happen. So if you didn't observe right off the bat that 15.4 plus 1.5 is not greater than 17, if you didn't notice that, you would come down to a contradiction at some point. And then you would conclude that there's not a triangle. <coughs> right, let's try this one. <coughs> All right, so baseball, oh, it's that time of year, October. Playoffs are just about to start. Or maybe they just did start. Who knows? Somebody must know. All right, a batter in a baseball game drops a bunt. So ball dribbling this direction. They tell us that it rolls 34 feet at an angle of 25 degrees from the first baseline. That's first base. This is the first baseline, 25 degrees. The pitcher's mound is 60.5 feet. So that's right there from home plate. How far must the pitcher run to get to the ball? So I've drawn that picture over there. They give us this angle, 25 degrees. That's not part of this triangle with the pitcher and the home plate and the ball, though. Right? 25 degrees plus 20 would give us 45. And with a baseball diamond, this is 90 degrees. So the pitcher to home plate between that and first base is 45 degrees. Subtract off the 25, and we get a 20. <clears throat> so that's the triangle that we're trying to deal with right there. Trying to deal with that SAS triangle. All right, so you guys use law of cosines to figure out that unknown distance, how far the pitcher has to run. <clears throat> law of cosines, SAS.
How far is that guy running? 30.8 feet. Let's check. <coughs> so, what did you call that? Let's call it little c, maybe. So, if we're trying to find that little c, <coughs> the law of cosines with a SAS is a lot easier than with an SSS. With the SSS, it's a little bit more work and a little easier to make mistakes, but with SAS, um, you're less likely to make a mistake because your unknown is already on the left all by itself. So you just have to type it into the calculator correctly. So we would do 60.5 squared plus 34 squared minus 2 times 60.5 times 34 times cosine of the angle opposite, which is 20 degrees. So we just have to type that in. And remember that when you type all that in, you then have to take the square root of that to get to your final answer. So when you type all that in, you get a big old number. And then you take the square root of that big old number. And does everybody agree that 30.8 is the final? So then 30.8. And if I take 30.8 and square it, I can tell you what that other hideous the big number, well, I guess it's not too big because this is small potatoes that we're dealing with here. But the big number would be roughly that. <coughs> Just remember to take the square root of that. Good. All right, let's go back to that other application that I wasn't sure if we were going to have enough time. I wanna, we'll go back to it now. <laughs> we'll try to do it slowly. It's a little tricky. Dealing with all these angles, we've done a few of these types of applications before. All right, so let's try to understand what the question is. So Fire Ranger in Tower A, right there, spots the fire over here. Did you get a different number? Yeah. Let's make I sure. I got it wrong. I messed up the stuff. Oh, you messed it up? Yeah. So, so we did have confirmation on the 30.8? Okay, yeah, yeah, you messed up. <laughs> we'll go with that answer. <laughs> we can look at it after if, if you're not sure. Okay, so fire tower A, <coughs> fire is at C. So let's make sure we understand how they drew the angles. So A spots the fire at a direction of 295. When they say direction of 295, they mean from the north pole going clockwise. <clears throat> so that 295, to spot the fire from Tower A, we're going to rotate around 295. So we're going clockwise around. So 295 all the way around. A ranger in Fire Tower B located 45 miles away at a direction of 45 degrees from Tower A. So from Tower A to Tower B, 45 miles at an angle of 45 degrees from the north. So that's our picture. And from Tower B, they see the same fire at 255 degrees. So their 255 is coming all the way around from the north again, kind of, uh, clockwise, 255. So they see the fire. So let's figure out what the angles in the triangle are. Because we need to know the, the angles in the triangle for it to, to get anywhere. OK. Well, let's start down here. This is the simplest one. So angle A is what? So we've got the 45 here, and we've got the 295 there. So what is? how are we going to get angle A? Exactly. So this piece right here is 360 minus 295. So that's 65. Everyone OK with that? <clears throat> if you went all the way around, that's 360. And we have to back off to there to get this part of angle A. So 360 minus 295, 65 gives us right there. 
So that forces angle A to be then 110. Because angle A is this whole thing right here. So angle A is 110 degrees. Angle A is this whole thing. <coughs> okay, so everybody good with that? Angle B is a little trickier. Angle B. So 255 takes us all the way around to that red side. Now, we, we drop this perpendicular here, or this perpendicular to the horizontal. If we drop that vertical there, do you see that this part in here is 45 degrees? Coming from over here. If that's 45, then that's 45. Is that okay with everybody? So opposite interior angles. We have a vertical here, a vertical here, a transversal, and then opposite interiors are equal. So that's 45. Alright, we're almost there. <clears throat> this part right here is a straight angle. That's 180 degrees. So we will get angle B if we take 255 and subtract off 180 and then subtract off 45. That will give it to us. Can you see that from the picture? So 255 minus 180 minus 45, that will give us what's left right in there. And so that's 225, 30 degrees. Is everybody okay with that? Let's see. All right. So let's redraw our triangle just so that we're kind of dealing with a little bit less of a mess. So we now have that A is 110, that's A. We have that B is 30. And we have that this side is 45. <coughs> All right. And the whole goal was to figure out how far A is from the fire and how far B is from the fire. So we're trying to find these two sides over here. So our unknowns are this one, which we'll call little a, and this one, which we'll call little b. Those are unknown. So we have angle side angle. <clears throat> right off the bat, we don't have an opposite pair to use a lot of signs, but we can find angle C really easily. Angle C right there has got to be 180 minus 140. It's got to be 40 degrees. Everybody see that? So we'll take 180, subtract off 110 and 30. So that'll give us C is equal to 40 degrees. <coughs> Get all those guys. Oops. Yeah, all right. A little crowded, but maybe we move these things up, actually. That's easier. There. <coughs> okay. So now we can use law of sines. Now we have an opposite pair. Now we can use the 40 degrees and the 45 as that pair. <coughs> so now we're golden. Let's go for uh, A up there. So A divided by sine of 110 is going to be equal to 45 divided by sine of 40. So therefore, solving for side A, A will be equal to 45 times the sine of 110 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees. Yeah, type that. 6.5 miles. Thank you. How's that look to everybody? Pretty straightforward. Once we get, the hardest part is drawing the triangle and getting your angles positioned properly. Once you do that, it's pretty mechanical. 
So to get <coughs> side B, we're going to put B divided by the sine of 30 degrees. That will equal our same ratio here, 45 over sine of 40. So then B will be 45. Sine of 30 is a half. So we know that. We can just calculate, put that in over here, I guess. And then what do we get for side B rounded to the nearest tenth? Type in all that. Make sure you wrap your denominator. I'm getting 35.0. Somebody else get that? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I got a different answer for side. Oh, 60. Oh, 60. I was going to say the way I drew the triangle, those look a little bit further off than. You got 65.0? 65 65.8? Okay. 65.8. We have at least two people saying that? Yes. 65.8 miles. Alright. <laughs> yeah, that looks a little more in line with our sketch. All right, so let's do, you guys didn't really get to work a side, side, side. So let's, let me give you one side, side, side. Last problem, finish this off, then we'll be out of here. All right, so <clears throat> here's your side, side, side that is going to form a triangle. So ABC. So find angle ABC. Find angle ABC from sides ABC. What angle are you guys going for first? B. Biggest angle. B is the biggest angle because it's opposite the biggest side.
Ooh, it is a obtuse angle, huh? Did you get that? 209.5? So the law of cosines that we're using to get B, we start with the side opposite B, square it, square each of the other sides, minus 2 times the product of the sides times cosine of B. And we subtract that stuff to the left and divide. You get minus 0.3 repeating. Take the inverse cosine of that and you get 109.5. And now we're going to jump to law of sines. So let's do A. Let's go for A. So we get that. And so for A, we should get. Thirty-one point six. And if we have that, we can calculate angle C with subtraction. So we'll do one eighty minus one hundred nine five point five minus thirty-one point six, and we get. Thirty-eight point nine degrees. Those look like the right numbers. I'll take your silence as affirmation. They look like the right numbers, at least for now. All right. I'll.